Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're asked to um, answer the following question. The maker of an automobile advertises that it takes nine seconds to accelerate from five kilometers per hour to 80 kilometers per hour. Assuming constant acceleration, compute the distance in meters that the car travels during the nine seconds. So um, the first time I worked this problem through, I made an error because I was not paying attention to my units. And not only do we have two different time measurement units, seconds versus hours, but we also have two different distance measurement units, kilometers versus meters there. So um, what I think I I think the approach that I would like to take is to focus on the units that we want to end up with because we're asked to um, to compute the distance in meters. So I know that I want my final answer to be in meters. So I'm going to change the information I was given to meters. And um, I could even I could either I could choose to leave it in terms of meters per hour or meters per se, convert to meters per second. I think I'm going to go with um, meters per second. So I'm going to convert everything to seconds. So what that means is that if I have five kilometers per hour, for example, I want to figure out how many meters per second that represents. So I have a little dimensional analysis to do. So we're going to take our five, I'm going to write it as five kilometers per one hour. And I'm going to multiply in such a way that I can um, cancel out these dimensions and get the ones that I want. So for example, um, a kilometer is equivalent to a thousand meters. And I want the kilometers to cancel out. So I'm going to multiply by one kilometer over one kilometer, but write the, the numerator as 1,000 meters. So that way when I multiply across, the kilometers will cancel. I'll be left with the units that I want. Now let's multiply that times um, something to do, something we can get rid of hours with. Well, one hour, and I'm going to put it in the numerator because I want it to cancel, um, is the same as 60 minutes, but we don't want minutes, right? We want seconds. So I'm going to multiply that times um, one, so I want the minutes to cancel, so I'm going to put one minute in the top, and then each minute is the same, equivalent to 60 seconds. And so if we multiply across here, what we're going to have is 5,000 for our number in the numerator over 3,600 in the denominator. And what I'm left with by design is meters per second because kilometers cancel with kilometers, hours with hours, um, the meters don't cancel, minutes cancel with minutes, and the seconds remain. So we have 5,000 meters per 3,600 seconds. So I'm going to reduce that as much as possible, but leave it as a fraction for the time being so as to prevent round off errors. So for now, I'm just going to reduce that down to 25 eighteenths of a meter per second. So this is um, the five kilometers per hour. Similarly, we can convert 80 kilometers per hour, 80 kilometers per one hour. Okay, so now everything's in terms of meters and seconds, and we can go ahead and use the information that they gave us about the nine seconds to accelerate. Um, from 25 eighteenths meters per second velocity to 200 ninths meters per second velocity. And um, that change over the course of nine seconds tells us the rate of change of the velocity, or in other words, the acceleration. And that rate of change is the slope, right? So they're giving us a slope. It's not immediately obvious, maybe, but so this is a slope in some way, shape, or form. They're giving us y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 um, when we're talking about the velocity. And so 
uh, we know that at zero seconds, that we were at a speed of 25 eighteenths meters per second. After nine seconds, we're up to a speed of 200 ninths meters per second. So you can think of these as the seconds being your x, your input, and the velocity being your y, your output. So we have two pairs of coordinates, and we're going to subtract y2 minus y1, 200 ninths minus 25 eighteenths, divided by x2 minus x1, 9 minus 0. And so what that's going to give us is 375 over 162. Now what are the units? Well, the units for the y coordinates or the velocities were in meters per second and the units in the denominator were in seconds so this is meters per second per second or in other words meters per second squared this is an acceleration so that makes sense that we would have those kinds of units and we were told to assume a constant acceleration. So what we just found is that we can write an acceleration function, a of t, equal to 375 over 162. Or that actually reduces to 125 over 54 meters per second squared. Our goal is to compute the distance now we know that the antiderivative of the acceleration is the velocity and the antiderivative of the velocity is the position function. So if we go ahead and find the velocity, v of t is going to be the antiderivative of 125 over 54 with respect to t. In other words, it's going to be 125 over 54 t plus some constant, which is actually the initial velocity right because that's going to be the value of the function at time zero now we know the value of the function at time zero because we know the initial velocity up here 25 eighteenths meters per second so we're going to just say that is 25 eighteenths so this will allow us to find the position function so the position function s of t it's going to be the antiderivative of 125 over 54 t plus 25 eighteenths with respect to time. So integrating that, we have s of t is equal to, now using the power rule, we're going to say the antiderivative of t to the first is t squared over 2. Um, I'm going to bring that 2 into the denominator, so this is actually 125 over 108 t squared plus 25 eighteenths t plus some constant c but again this is going to be the initial position for the purposes of our pr exercise here the initial position is zero for our purposes call that position zero um, and we'll increase from there so s of t then is really just 125 over 108 t squared plus 25 over 18 t now, how would we find how far the car has traveled in 9 seconds? Since we chose position 0 to be at time 0, um, all we need to do is figure out, and we're traveling in one direction, so all we need to do is to calculate our position at time t equals 0. I'm sorry, at time t equals 9 seconds. So plugging in to s of t, we have s of 9 is 125 over 108 times 9 squared plus 25 eighteenths times 9. So with just a little bit of arithmetic we see that it's going to be 106.25 meters. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to like it. It helps other students to find the video.